بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأفضل الصلاة وأتم السلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today inshallah uh, we will talk about one of the unique pearls in Islam, one of the mothers of the believers, the sixth wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and her name is Hind bintu Abi Umayya radiyallahu anha, uh, better known for Umm Salama, the mother of the believers. Uh, Sayyida Aisha radiyallahu anha said, لما تزوج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أم سلمة حزنت حزنا شديدا لما ذكر لنا من جمالها فتلطفت حتى رأيتها فرأيت أضعاف ما وصفت به So when uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم when the messenger of Allah was married to Um سلمة uh, عائشة رضي الله عنها felt so sad because of what was narrated or what was uh, mentioned to, to, to the wives about uh, how beautiful she was. So she said, okay, I kept it uh, for me until I saw her and I've seen double and double and more and more of what they were, of what she was described by. So Hind, Hind bin to Abi Umayya, Umm Salam. She was the daughter of Zad al-Rakb. What does Zad al-Rakb mean? Zad al-Rakb means that he is the one if someone travels with him, he would not leave anyone to carry any provision because he would provide for everybody, for all the travelers traveling with him. He was very noble and he was an elite member of his Quraysh tribe. And he was known for his generosity, especially for the travelers. So his name was Abu Umayya ibn al-Mughira ibn Abdullah al-Qurashi al-Makhzumi. And her mom was Hatika bint Amir ibn Rabi'ah al-Kannaniya. So uh, Umm Salama May Allah be pleased with her, was one of the members of the prophetic house, of the blessed prophetic uh, group. And she was someone who narrated so many narrations for Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was so knowledgeable in fiqh. And she was, as I just said, she was very noble, very beautiful. She, she was married be, before Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was married to Abu Salama, Abdullah ibn Abdul Asad ibn Hilal ibn Makhzum. And he was one of the closest companions to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was a very good, a very close companion to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was given the title of Sahib al Hijratain, the one who made both Hijras, the Hijra to Abyssin and the Hijra to Medina, uh, to the blessed Medina. Uh, he was the cousin of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
and his his uh, uh, his ma his aunt was Barra bint Abdul Muttalib. So he is the cousin of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So uh, Abu Salama and his wife Hind, uh, in addition to to, to their blessed uh, um, uh, uh, to their blessed line, uh, lineage, uh, they had a very very strong and a very good. Uh, position in Islam. They were of the very first 10 people who migrated to Habasha. And there in, in Abyssinia, uh, Hind radiallahu anha was an amazing example of the good wife. She was very loyal, very faithful. She was an obedient, an obedient wife. She would, she would fulfill her duties toward her husband. And she would prepare a good, a good home, a good atmosphere at home for her husband. She was with him all the time during hardship and during ease. She was with him and she endured all the torture that Quraysh uh, was, uh, was uh, practicing over those Muslims who believed in the, uh, in the message of uh, the messenger of Allah. She, she was a good wife. She traveled with her husband to Abyssinia, uh, and uh, just to run away with uh, uh, to, to to practice her religion. She left everything behind: money, home, uh, people, relatives, land. She left everything for the sake of Allah and to get rid of the time of the of the torture of Quraysh people. And subhanAllah in Abasin, there in that uh, land, she had her son Salama. And later on, uh, we, we know what happened to Umm Salama in Abbasid. So she, she narrated with very, very specific details the, the, uh, what happened between Amr ibn al-As and his, uh, his uh, friend who came to take back the Muslims from, from the king of uh, Abyssinia, from al Najashi. She narrated the incident in so much details. And she was a true witness. She sent us until today a very documented uh, uh, information about what happened. She would not care about dunya. She would not care about the palace where, where they were. She would not care about these things, but she was caring about her Islam, about the Muslims and about the religion. So Umm Salama later on came back, came back to Mecca. And when it was the time for traveling, for migrating to the blessed Medina, she was one of those people who migrated to Medina. And she went with her husband on her haudaj, and the haudaj is the the uh, the um, camel that carries uh, a special place where the where a woman could sit could sit on, and by that she was the first woman, the first woman, awwalu 
دخلت المدينة مهاجرة. She was the first woman came uh, who migrated to Medina and she was carried on uh, an, uh, a camera. So, Umm Salama arrived in Al Medina Al Munawwar. And before she traveled, something a very uh, uh, something happened to her, and she narrated what happened to her. So she said, "I traveled with my husband to be of the very first people to travel to Medina, and of course." The uh, travel was not uh, easy. It was in the desert with the high heat and it wasn't easy. Her son Salama was with her. So when the men, when Quraysh saw that her husband is traveling He's taking his wife and children with with uh, with uh, and her, his son with him. So they separated the husband and the wife by power, and they prevented Abu Salama to take his wife with him. So they sent back Umm Salama and her her child to. Uh, to, to, to her tribe. So the people of her husband, the uh, uh, tribe of her husband, Banu Abdul, Abdul Asad, were so upset with that. And they, they said, we will not, we will not leave our son, which means the grandchild, with, with her. So they wanted to take the child. So someone was pulling the child and he was, uh, uh, until he was taken away from her after his arm was dislocated. Um Salama was crying every single day. She would go every day out and she would sit uh, to, 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 to a place called Al Abtah and she would cry and all day until it is the nighttime. So long, so many uh, months passed by until her cousin. Uh, 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 until someone of her tribe came and he saw her. He saw this type of faithfulness. Months passed and every day she would do the same thing. She would go out and she would, uh, she was so loyal to her husband, to her child. She would be crying until that person told uh, was so saddened by her, uh, by what happened to her, and he convinced the people just to release her. So they said to her, go, follow your, your husband, if you will. And the child was given to his mom, and this mom, this patient mom, mom was given the uh, the opportunity to have her child and to migrate with him. So one day, Umm Salama said to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, La asma'u dhikra nisa'i fi al-hijrati bi shay. I don't, I don't re re recall I heard anything uh, about women migrating. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed ayah 195 of Surah Ali Imran when he said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Fastajaba lahum rabbuhum anni la udi'u amala amilin minkum min zakarin au unsa, ba'dukum min ba'd. 
And the Lord is, uh, responded to them, never will I allow to be lost the work of any worker. The work of any worker among you, whether male or female. You are of one another. So Um Salama, her shyness would not prevent her from asking Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the woman's right. And her, her, the response to her, to her question was revelation. So she believed that the religion she is believing in, that her faith would not differentiate between male and female in reward. Both male and female are requested to pray. Both of them are requested to pay zakat if, the, uh, uh, if certain uh, conditions uh, were applied. But both of them were were asked to fast. Both of them were asked to pay to to do to do Hajj. But so the reward is for both of them. Now, first year of Hijra passed by, and it was uh, the Battle of Badr. So Abu Salama was uh, fighting in uh, the Battle of Badr. And then, of course, uh, it was a big victory for the Muslims. In Uhud, Abu Salama was fighting with the uh, army of the Messenger of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was severely injured. So later on, his wound healed and uh, he, he uh, recovered. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, sent him in a dispatch to the land of Bani Asad. But when he came back, his wound got worse and it opened up again and it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't heal. And the result was he was a murderer for the sake of Allah. Again, Umm um Salama was crying, crying, crying. She was so loyal to him. She was, she was so, um, so, so much in love with him. He was a very good husband to her. So this widow remembered when, uh, when she was uh, one day uh, well, with her husband, she remembered that there was a conversation between them. So she, uh, she said to him, تعال أعاهدك ألا تزوج بعدي ولا أتزوج بعده. Let's have an agreement, you and me. Let's uh, promise each other that I will not get married after you, and you would not get married after me. He said, would you, would you obey me? She said, of course. And he said to her, إذا مت تزوجي. If I die, then you get married and he made dua Allahumma arzuq umm salama ba'di rajulan khayran minni la yuhzinuha wa la yu'ziha oh Allah give umm salama a better husband than me he won't make her sad and he won't hurt her so she said who is better than abi salama And he was the one whom Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for him. And when he said, Allahumma ghfir li Abi Salama, warfa' darajatahu fi al-mahdiyin. Oh Allah, forgive Abi Salama and elevate him. 
So she was thinking, what, what type of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, dua that her husband is making for her? Who is better than her husband? So, uh, now that her husband passed away, she remembered one hadith that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and she narrated that hadith. So she said, an Ummi Salama, Zawjir Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, man asabathu musibatun, faqala kama amara Allah, إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون اللهم أجرني في مصيبتي وأعقبني خيرا منها إلا فعل الله ذلك به. So what happened? The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, if if a misfortune, if a hardship befalls someone, and he says as Allah has ordered. Uh, and which was, we belong to Allah and to him we return. We belong to Allah and to him we return. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Oh Allah, reward me in my hardship, reward me in my misfortune and give me better than, give me better than this uh, what then what happened to me afterwards? Allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa khlufni khayram minha. So whoever says this, Allah will do that for him. And Um Salama, Um Salama radiallahu anha said, uh, when, when my husband Abu Salama passed away, I said that. And then I said, who is better than Abu Salam? Who is better than Abu Salam? And she, when she wanted to say it, she was hesitant. Is there someone who is better than Abu Salam? So she said, فَلَمَّا تُوَفِّيَ أَبُو سَلَمَةً قُلْتُ ذَلِكْ ثُمَّ قُلْتُ وَمَنْ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَبِي سَلَمَةً فَأَعْقَبَكَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَتَزَوَّجَهَا so Um Salam said when Abu Salama died, and uh, I said that. I said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa khlufni khayram minha. And then I said, and that's uh, Um Salama saying, who is better than Abu Salam? And then Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left her the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he married her. So this is a big lesson for us. We all have calamities. We all, we all pass through hardships. But whenever we are faced with one, we have immediately to say, and I mean immediately, at the time of the calamity, to say, Allahum inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allahum ma'jurna fi musibatina wa khlufna khayram minha. This is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted us to say, and we say it. We say it. We believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never takes something or never puts us in a hardship until he puts he, he, he gives us something else and unless he he provides with something or something else. Just have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember that whenever he promised something, this thing will happen. So whenever you are in a calamity, just remember this dua. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa khlufni khayram minha. Ya Allah, reward me in my hardship and give me better than it. And this is what happened to 
uh, Umm Salama radiyallahu anha. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent someone to ask for her for marriage. But she was, she was scared of three things that she has. Something in her character she didn't want to, to be punished for if she was with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as his wife. So she said, uh, I am a woman who has a woman who has so much jealousy. And فأخاف, فأخاف I I I cannot accept that you see something bad from me because of my jealousy that I will be uh, uh, punished for by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was her first concern that she is jealous. And I am an old woman. And I have children. So, uh, so she said, uh, when, when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, got her response, he said, So what, what you mentioned of jealousy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you get rid of it. وَأَمَّا مَا ذَكَرْتِ مِنَ السِّنْ فَقَدْ أَصَابَنِي مِثْلَ الَّذِي أَصَابَكِ And as what you mentioned of getting older, I am getting older too. وَأَمَّا مَا ذَكَرْتِ مِنَ الْعِيَالِ And what you mentioned of children, فَإِنَّمَا عِيَالُكِ عِيَالِي Your children are my children. So, Umm Salama رضي الله عنها, uh, hearing this, uh, this good news, these uh, responses from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she accepted to marry him. She gave herself to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she said, أَبْدَلَنِي اللَّهُ بِأَبِي سَلَمَةَ خَيْرًا مِنْ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has replaced me uh, with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instead of Abu Salama. He replaced me with a better husband, with a better person. So with this, she, uh, Umm Salama, became the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the people of Medina, they witnessed, uh, they witnessed uh, something strange uh, in her uh, marriage. They said, So at the beginning of the night, she was a bride. وَقَامَتْ مِنْ آخِرِ اللَّيْلِ تَطْحَنْ and by the end of the night, she was just working on making bread. And she, she at that time, was the mother of the believers. So at the beginning of the night, she was a bride. And at the end of the night, she was working. Umm Salama radiallahu anha was uh, so happy to live in, uh, with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She loved him so much, he loved her, and uh, she would uh, buy slaves and she would uh, free them, but she would say, you have to, to, to show service to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she was... Um, uh, competing with people for the traces of the of the water of his wudu, just to get the barakah. 
She she would keep some of the blessed her uh, hair of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with uh, with her uh, in a special vessel, and she would show this uh, these uh, blessed hair uh, of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She would show it to to those close to her, to those whom he, she loves. And she would put some these these uh, blessed her in uh, water, and she would give this water to the to to patients who would drink it and get the barakah of that. They would get the blessings. They would get the uh, the healing out of uh, that water. So. Subhanallah, uh, Umm Salama was known to be as one of the wise, wise, beautiful, intelligent, and political and, and uh, politically knowledgeable uh, mother of the believers. And uh, of course, she she said that uh, she was jealous, but uh, her jealousy was controlled. She wouldn't allow Shaitan to get to, to to ignite that jealousy. Once she was asked about her. Uh, about Zainab bin Tujahsh, the uh, another wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and her jealousy of the of uh, the the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would not prevent her from being fair to them. So when she was about asked about Zainab, she was very fair to her. She was truthful. She was pious. So she wouldn't just uh, ignore any of the rights of her, uh, 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 of, these, of these mothers of, the, uh, of believers. So she said about her, she was a good wife. She was a good lady. She was a lady. كانت امرأة صالحة صوامة قوامة صنعا تتصدق بذلك كله على المساكين. So she was. Uh, this is what she said about Zainab رضي الله عنها, the, and, uh, the other wife of Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. She said she was a good woman. She was a pious woman. She was always fasting. She was of those people who pray at night. She was creative in handwork and she would do some handwork and she would uh, give the money for that as charity for the, for the poor. So this was Umm Salam. She was a person uh, with very good manners. And to, to this, to the beauty, to the wisdom, to, the, to being intelligent, she, as I just mentioned, was politically knowledgeable. And she was, she was the advisor of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Yawmul Hudaybiyah, the day of treaty. Her wisdom and what she gave, the advice that she gave Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, exceeded the, the wisdom of men. So on that day, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, after the agreement between him and Quraysh, he asked his companions just to, he told them that we are not going to go to, to Mecca to perform uh, the Umrah this year. We will do it next year. So everyone should uh, relieve himself from the uh, uh, state of Ihram. So they have to slaughter uh, a sheep and they have to shave their heads. The companions could not do it. 
not because they they were uh, uh, objecting or they were opposing Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu No, but they could not do it. They came out of Medina to with the intention of performing Umrah, and the Quraysh is preventing them. How could they? How could they do that? So they did, they could not do it. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came came back to 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 his uh, tent and he said to him, Umm Salama, what happened? And Umm Salama was very clever. She was the best advisor on that day, and she said to him, Ya Rasulullah, I suggest that. You go out to them. You don't talk to anyone. You slaughter the sheep and you ask someone to shave your head. And he did. And all the, the companions did the same. Everyone did what Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. So this was the mother of the believers, Umm Salama. And of her merits is that she conveyed to us a lot of the hadith, a lot of the transmissions about Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So she narrated so many of his, of his hadith And she would tell us about so many things. Even on the day uh, that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, she narrated to us so many hadith on that day. And she said, she said that when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, I put my hand on his chest on that day and weeks passed after whenever I would make wudu whenever I would eat the misk the misk scent would not leave me would not leave my hand Umm Salama radiallahu anha as I mentioned was a very pious woman she had a very special relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She was so obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She was, she was one of the, uh, the women who, who devoted their lives for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after the death of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umm Salama was the the person whom the sahaba the companions and uh, the the followers at tabi'in also they would they would go to her to learn from her to know what they what what she heard from sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to ask her fiqh questions and umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu an when he became the caliph, uh, the caliph, he was giving her special gifts uh, uh, that that would be good for the mother of the believers. Um, Salama was was so caring, so loving. She was full of humanity. She was very kind, and uh, she was. Uh, known for for those uh, qualities. It was narrated that Al Hassan Al Basri, the uh, leader of uh, or the governor of uh, Al Basra in Iraq, uh, we all know that he was raised in his in her house because his father was a slave to 
Zayd ibn Thabit radiyallahu an, and his mom was also th uh, that. So his mom left him one day when he was uh, an infant. She wanted to do something, so she left him at the house of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was crying and crying and crying. Um Salama was, was so kind. She was very kind. She, she, couldn't, she, she couldn't bear it to hear the, the, uh, the, the crying of uh, 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 Al-Hassan al-Basri. So what she did, she put him on her on her breast just to to um, out of of kindness. Just she she wanted him to suck her her breast. So there was some milk at that time. Subhanallah. So Musalama radiyallahu anha was one of the mothers of the believers, one of the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of the pearls of Islam. So whenever you go to Medina and you stop by Jannatul Baqiyah, just give your salam to Umm Salama and to all the mother of the believers who were buried there and to the daughters of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and make dua for them, make dua that we would be good children to the mothers of the believers. And until next week, I leave you by sending special greetings and the best salam to our beloved messenger, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.